But fasten your seatbelts, hold on tight. We're in for one crazy ride tonight on the Josh Nolan Full Throttle Racing Show. Hashtag one on Facebook. Ladies and gentlemen, fasten your seatbelts, hold on tight. You're in for one incredibly awesome and super cool ride today on this Josh on the Josh Nolan Full Throttle Racing Show. Hashtag one on YouTube. Today we have with us David Luithi Jr. Welcome to the show, David. Am I saying your last name right, David? It's it's pronounced Luth, but that that's all right. That, Luth. that okay, David Luth, yeah. David Luth Jr. Sorry about that. So, all David, right. let's okay, Beans. I had you on the Facebook version. We're going to kind of restart your story all over again because this is the Facebook, ver the YouTube version. So, David, let's talk about your racing career. Where did it all begin for you? It all began at Pocono, Lehigh Valley Quarter Midget Racing Club. It's right next to the bigger NASCAR track. And it pretty much all started there. Okay, it all started there. So how did it all start there? Did you get did your family race or how did you get end up getting behind the wheel? Well, my family raced, my grandfather raced and my dad raced. I'm pretty sure my grandfather raced in a late model and my dad raced a 270, I'm pretty sure. Okay. And I I can't really exactly remember how I got into it, but from what I've heard, I just wanted to do it. So I ended up racing. Okay. So do you remember what it was like for you to climb behind the wheel for the first time at all? Were you nervous, scared, excited? What was, what was your emotions like getting behind the wheel for the first time? I was pretty nervous. Definitely. Uh, when I got out on the track, I, I had, it was kind of nerve wracking. So, but I yeah. eventually I got used to it when I, I started actually racing. Okay. Up by, yeah. Up by Pocono um, at the beginning of the year or towards the end of the year. So yeah, I'm pretty sure it's towards the end of the year, but they have a try a quarter midget where they let people that want to oh, get yeah. into quarter midget racing. And that's how it, I, first race and then i'm pretty sure we got a car and so david um when you got behind the wheel of the quarter midget for the first time how long did it before you started seeing like positive results and things happening where you're like yeah we're, we're gaining progress here it's one of those things where i can't honestly remember but i i'm pretty sure i'd say it would, it would be if I were to think about it, I think it would be a couple times in, you know? Okay. So David, uh, when you started out with quarter midgets, where did you, what class did you start out at? I started out in red plate or rookie red plate. I'm pretty sure it's just called uh, a rookie class. Okay. You have rookie reds and then you have reds. So I started out there. And then you that went into blue plate, right? Yeah. Well, then I went into red plate and then rookie blue plate. And then it goes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, David, um, so what classes and quarter midgets did you run? I raced, I'm pretty sure at my track, I think there's one more. I think it's called the, the outlaw class. Okay, okay. I run that at Pocono. Okay. But I raced the reds the blue plates um heavy 120 heavy 160 junior animal senior animal and the classes i'm running right now are unrestricted animal and heavy world formula okay so have you won a lot of, have you won a lot of races in those classes you're running now yes i have okay so what is your five-year plan with racing going forward my year for going forward so next year i'm thinking of we're thinking of continuing quarter midget racing for one more year okay and i'm gonna continue to race a slingshot okay and we're gonna start out racing the 125 micro 
Okay, 125 micro. Okay. So, David, let's talk now about, um, okay, going to start running the 125 micro. Have you done any testing behind the wheel of that yet? No, not yet. The motor is all together. And this winter, we're going to take it down to get it power coated. It's okay. just the frame. Nothing's really on it. But. Okay. And how's the slingshot class been going for you? It's been going pretty well. Um, towards the end of the year, which from what I heard, this is kind of how I started in red plate. We broke quite a few parts, but eventually I started to get used to it. I started to like the car more. I started to understand how to drive it more. And now I'm in the all-star class. And okay. last night we had our last race of the year. I believe if things, if something happens in the future for a future race, which I don't believe there will be, but towards the end of the year that we might have another one but I, i'm not sure i think that might be our last race of the year okay so david um let's talk about your racing number where did that all start for you then well my racing number actually started with my birthday because my birthday is march 10th 2010 okay so since both of my it was 10 I decided to go, let's, let's go with the number 10. Okay. Okay. So David, um, what do you got for sponsors on your racing team? Well, I have, um, well, it used to be called justice fuels, but the owner of that Tommy, which I, I call uncle Tom sold that company. So now we just say it's Havati Motorsports. Okay. So, um, David, um, what else do you have for sponsors? Um, that's it for sponsors. I mean, I guess you can count my mom and dad, my grandparents, and some others, but that's so if, that's what it is for sponsors. So have you started work kind of putting together kind of sponsorship deals going into next year for the 125? I'm, I'm thinking about doing something with an, another sponsor. Um, it's, it's actually kind of funny because it, it started out as a joke, but now I'm actually considering, you know, doing it. So, uh... yeah. Okay. So David, um, let's talk now about, um, okay. When you're out on the racetrack and you're getting strapped into your race car, what's your thought process? Like, are you, what, how, how do you get mentally focused to do this? I'm, I pretty much. It's hard to explain, so I'm I'm sorry if I stutter or anything because it's quite hard to explain, but I just kind of get into my head and think about, okay, I need to do this if it's a feature, and if I need to improve something off of the heat race, I said, you did this in the last race, so maybe you can try and do this to improve on that, and most of the things on the racetrack are uncontrollable, so... I think about if this happens, do this. And if another thing happens, do something else. I think about the starts and where I'm starting and what I can do where other cars might go. Until okay. I get up to the So and... I'm going to go ahead and throw this out there, David. Um, if there's anybody going to be out there watching this racing show and want to help David out with his racing team, reach out to David, his mom, Nicole his family because it appreciates the sponsorship on David's race car as he gets further into his racing career. So David, let's talk about your racing nickname. Now, where does that come from? Squeak. Yeah. Well, my grandfather, I'm pretty sure since I, when I was a baby, I had a very high pitched voice and he used to say that I would squeak all the time. So that's okay. Very much okay. where it came from. Yeah. So David, um, now, okay. Have you started kind of figuring out paint schemes and stuff like that for your race cars for next year? Yes. I've, I figured out what I wanted to do with it. I used to have, a, a hyper car for the quarter midgets. Yes. And that was a purple blue fluorescent orange. Yeah. And at first I didn't really like that color scheme, but now it's kind of 
made the color scheme for the team it i mean sometimes most of the time now the purple isn't included it's mostly just the blue and the purple and sometimes the black but okay i feel like that that's our colors for our team so i was thinking we can keep the paint job for the hyper car that we okay. sold and put it onto the micro so david um you know out of all the cars you've driven what is what would you say is your favorite car to drive so far it's definitely the slingshot because I really, I, it's hard to explain, but it's just how it feels. I feel more comfortable in it considering that I'm a lot bigger now. So I don't really fit into the quarter midgets as good as I used to. So I have a lot of more room to stretch, you know? Oh yeah. As well as the fact of just how it drives, it drives a lot different. And I, I like that. And I'm excited for that because by the looks of things with the micro, it looks like you need to drive it like a combination between the slingshot and the quarter midget, which is why I'm really excited for it. Okay. Very cool. So David, okay. Now building on this. Okay. Who, um, who helps work on your race car? Um, me and my grandfather both work on our race cars. My dad and my uncle do. We all work on our race cars. Usually when I'm in school, I can't really work on them as often because I have homework and such. But me and my grandfather, my father and my uncle, we all work on our race cars. And sometimes um, sometimes so things your... just don't really work out and we have to do oh, yeah. something else. But. So, David, what's your favorite job about with working on the race cars? I really enjoy just doing, just helping out, you know? Okay, I, mean, I like okay. doing some of the, the larger jobs too, but just helping yeah. out is really good. I don't, you know, I don't really, when I'm out in the garage, I don't like to stand around, you know, I want to do something. So helping out kind of, helps when i when i'm not doing something big so yeah so david um now let's talk about your racing hero who is your favorite race car driver that's a, that's a really difficult thing to say because i i don't really watch nascar i mean i've started to get into it more definitely but I don't really have a favorite race car driver in terms of NASCAR. If we're talking about just racing in general, I'd say just racing in general. Okay. I'd say, um, uh, JT Beerman, James, uh, JT, which, which I'm, I'm saying they're my favorite because I've, I've known them since I've been at the quarter major track and those are, okay. you, you know, Larry, Larry Logan, Connor, okay. a lot, a lot of other people. Okay, so um, David, now let's go into this portion of the racing show here. Let's talk about what is your home racetrack that you race on? For quarter midgets, my home racetrack is Pocono. Okay. And for the slingshot, my home racetrack would be Hamlin. Hamlin okay. Speedway. Okay. So which, actually, which do you prefer driving better? Do you prefer driving Pocono or Hamlin better? Which one's, which one is your all-time favorite? I'd say I like driving Hamlin better, but can I say something about that sure. last thing? I got it. I got sure. it wrong. Um, technically, if you count last year, cause I did drive the slingshot just a little bit at the end of last year. Okay. Technically my home track for the slingshot is shell hammers. So, okay. 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 But since I've been driving it a lot this year in, at Hamlin, it's been, Okay. Yeah. So David, um, you know, let's talk about, okay, let's go a little, little, uh, further David. So let's talk about, okay. Um, okay. What, what races are you looking forward to racing in coming up? Well, um, recently there's been, uh, an announcement so I can probably talk about this. It originally was a secret that you can't really say anything about, but it's, it's been publicly announced. So I can say something about it, but 
there's going to be a, a USAC race up at Pocono. Okay. Next year. So I'm pretty excited for that, as well as the Tricky Triangle, which always happens every year. Oh, yeah. It, in terms of slingshot races, I'm not really sure what's going to happen next year, but I'm excited for the USAC race next year. Okay. So, David, um, let's talk now. Okay. What is the worst thing you, you've had happen to you as a race car driver? The worst thing that's ever happened to me? In terms of in terms of a, a wreck or a crash, I'd say the time where I this was the first ever flip over I've ever had. Technically second, but this one was really the first. But I don't really know how it started. I kind of launched off of someone else's car, and I bit, did a barrel roll in the air, from what I heard from other people, and I landed on all four tires. That. That was pretty bad. I had a headache after that. I mean, it wasn't the worst thing that's ever happened. I don't, I don't think I'm, I'm not exactly sure about that. In terms of crashes, I think that's the worst. But I think something, something worse may have happened. Okay. So David, um, let's talk about now. Let's go into when you're at the racetrack. What's your favorite thing to eat at the racetrack? My favorite thing to eat. Well, if I do eat something, I usually eat something small um like a like a little a little snack because i don't like to eat anything big because um i have some stomach problems that we're trying to figure out but usually if i eat something i'll eat something small like a couple of fries or a a bottle of water or something like that so david um when you go out to eat what's your favorite uh, restaurant to eat at um, there are, what do you mean? Like if you were to go out to eat away from the racetrack, what, what's your favorite restaurant to eat at? Oh, okay. Um, oh, I thought we were talking about at the racetrack with both. Were you talking about at the racetrack with the first question? The first question. Yes. Yes. Okay. But, the, but, the, but this question here, where, where's your favorite restaurant to eat at away from the racetrack? Um, I got a lot of favorite restaurants. I'm not really sure what's my favorite, but to give an example, I'd have to say um, there's a hoagie restaurant. I can't put the name on it, but I'm going to just name a hoagie restaurant I know that I really like. And that's that's CJ's. That's pretty close. Okay, it's, okay, okay. It's definitely not my favorite restaurant, but I, I can't think of anything else because I do have a lot of favorites. Oh, but. okay, okay. So, David, when you're at home, what's your favorite home-cooked meal that your mom makes for you then? My favorite home-cooked meal? Yes. I'm I'm not sure about that one either, but um, um, mac and cheese is pretty good that she makes. Um, okay. The soup she makes is pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. So, David, um, what do you like to do away from the racetrack? What do I like to do away from it? Well, I I do go to school. Okay. I um. Now I think about it, I don't really do do much other than go to school and race. Okay, I mean, okay, okay. So, what's some of your school friends think of you being a race car driver? They think it's it's pretty interesting, you know. At sometimes it's we don't really talk about it other times we do talk about it quite a bit but it's they think it's pretty interesting pretty interesting topic recently i've been taking them up to the racetrack to watch and they think it's pretty cool so I okay. Think okay very cool it. very cool so do you have anything out there you want to say to the kids to help get them in a race car david well one thing i'd say is don't be scared of the race car just think of it as just think of it as a a piece of machinery that you you shouldn't be scared of it at all you know it's and it eventually you know that you will get used to driving the car and knowing how it will handle okay so do you have anything um you would like to anybody you'd like to say thank you to as far as your racing career goes or I'd like to say thank you to my, my parents, my grandparents. I'd like to say thank you to my sponsor, Havati, Tom Havati. 
as well as Sill. Um, I'd like to say thank you to a lot of people. Um, I can't really think of some of them right now, but um, my uncle. Um, I'd say that's about it, but I, so I think there's some others. But do you have any questions you want to ask me, David? I'm going to go ahead and throw it over to you. Okay. What is a what is the most unique car that you've ever seen someone drive? Oh man, that's that's a toughie. I'd say um, either sprint cars. It, it's quite interesting to look to see what it all takes to race a sprint car. Um, definitely, and then drag cars. It's oh yeah, drag cars are quite interesting. And then then our dirt stock cars and modifieds out here. It's it's all quite interesting. All the all the stuff that goes be, gets into that goes into the behind the scenes stuff with racing. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any more questions for me? Um, I'd say, what is the most unique track you've ever seen? I'll tell you what. I've been to a few tracks. Um, really awesome tracks on my top two dirt tracks i've seen knoxville is right up there knoxville iowa for the knoxville nationals uh, a sprint car race that is a really awesome track to be at but then the other one the flip side of things is for the big dirt modified stock car races we have out here boone iowa is, is the other unique one because that's a three it's mile track and it's just they get a thousand to two thousand race cars for seven days for that track for that race and it's just it's really unique to see that race too Yes. So, um, David, um, I would like to, do you want to say anything to the kids to help get them to come to my racing show? I'd say that's, it's quite a unique experience and I, I'd, I'd recommend it if you want to be asked some questions and yeah, you want to. Yeah. Yeah. So for you being a race car driver, David, last question for, for you being a race car driver, What's your favorite part about being a race driver? Being doing the actual driving part of it or dealing with the fans? I'm going to say be, the best part about being a race car driver is is uh, learning how to drive the car to eventually get better at it so you can eventually get good at driving the car, you know? I feel like okay. that's always a good experience cuz you learn a lot of things, especially if sometimes when you get in another car, you learn something new in that. So I feel okay. like that's a big part of racing. Okay, David, I'm going to let you step out. I'm going to give a little racing news update for us here, and then I will call you and thank you in person, okay? Okay. Yes. I'll let you step out of Zoom then, okay? Okay, so I, I just exit? Yep. yep, just exit. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Ladies and gentlemen, um, that was David Luth, uh, quarter midget racer, micro sprint racer, and slingshot racer from um, out in Pennsylvania uh, with us on our racing show today. But um, ladies and gentlemen, definitely keep a tab on David because David has got some big things going on in his racing career. So he is definitely going to be one of fun to watch. Definitely in the near future, being he's racing slingshot and mic and uh, quarter midgets, but he also is going to make the jump into 125 micros also. But um, also, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk a little racing news update for you there. Um, I'll tell you what, Ty Gibbs yesterday in that Bush Series race in Martinsville, I I could see Brandon Jones Jones's point. Um, taking your own teammate out to win a race because you want to get to that last round of the championships on the final lap. Ooh, that is not a good thing to have happen, especially, um, you know, doing that to your own teammate. Yeah. yeah. Um, I could see some very big. Uh, words said next week at Homestead and if nothing else, retaliation taking place there. At, and not at Homestead, but at Phoenix next week. But um, but yes, I'm looking forward to seeing what's going to happen there. Um, Kyle Larson has the pole for the NASCAR race today. And then Tony Stewart in a top alcohol dragster went out and won and made his way into the final round of a top field dragster uh, championship round this today. So good luck to Tony Stewart today. 
Um, but with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, just thought I'd come on here, give a little racing news update, everybody, um, see what's happening there. Um, but yes, um, and also Brandon Jones is going to be driving for JR Motorsports next year. So definitely something else to watch. But um, with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to let you go. You guys have a good day. Talk to you later on another episode of the Josh One Full Throttle Racing Show. Hashtag one on YouTube. Um, if you would like to sponsor my racing show, feel free to email me at jjnolan151 at gmail.com. Or you can text or call me at 712-209-7138. I mean, also go press like on the Josh Nolan Full Throttle Racing Show hashtag one on YouTube, and then also go press like on the Josh Nolan Full Throttle Racing Show hashtag one on Facebook, because that's where a lot of racing news are updated. But with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, you have a good day and keep watching that racing. Um, so have a good day, ladies and gentlemen.